Wow, that was wild. He was very wrong about so much. He was mad, he was weird, he was classic Joe Biden, and he wasn't really ashamed of it. I don't think he even knows how bad, how disgraceful actually it all was yesterday. Hey, but he got through two hours. The fake news thinks it's awesome. More on that in just a moment. I have to talk about a very important issue that did not come up here. Terrorism, you know, just last weekend, that guy right there, his name is Malik Aram, 44 years old from Britain, got here about three weeks ago to the United States, held three Jewish people in a synagogue hostage, and the FBI tried to say it had nothing to do with terrorism. They actually said that out loud. Now first, a little bit about this guy. Yes, he got here recently. British Intel watch list in 2020, spent six months in Pakistan. That's a real red flag, by the way. Banned from British courts the day after 9-11. Yeah, 20 years ago, he was saying pro-Al-Qaeda stuff in public. They had their eye on this guy for a long time. He just got here in late December to the United States and <laughs> the FBI didn't bother whatever, there's no real curiosity about this. Why is that? The FBI really was in a rush to say, nothing to see here. We do believe from our engagement with this subject that he was singularly focused on one issue uh, and it was not specifically related to the Jewish community, uh, but we're continuing to work to find motive and, and we will continue on that path. So uh, he's in the FBI. Uh, I have a cubicle over there. I was able to find this. Have you heard it? This is the hostage taker, Malik Akram, in the middle of the operation, talking to a buddy in London. Yeah, I'm in America, yeah, I thought I'll just kiss my last goodbye to you. Ne? Well, what's happened? Yeah, I've took some hostages on, yeah, I don't, I've been surrounded by all my men, I'm in a synagogue, yeah. I've come to die, Why but, you come but to I die need for? to do that. Why uh, I've come to die. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take him toe to toe. Anyway, listen. I promised my brother when I washed him on that deathbed that I'm gonna go down as a martyr. I ain't gonna let no more suppress me. I've come to die, G. But you're not come on. Okay. You're not. Come I on. prayed for Allah for two years for this. I'm telling you. The, the, either you come for it or they send it. I'm going back home in a body bag. Not, I'm opening the doors for every youngster to enter America and f with them. So they let him die and they didn't release him. But guess what? Maybe they'll have compassion for f***ing Jews, but come in a f***ing America and f*** with them if they want to f***. They'll give them f***ing war. I think we deserve to know about this. Maybe the president of the United States should be asked about this. But no, it just brushed away so we can focus on white supremacy and those neo-Nazis who are out there somewhere. Uh, this is a priority. This threatens all of us. Incompetence, a cover-up, actually. And uh, the FBI, great people there, but it's been really warped over the past couple of years by people like Comey, by people like Mueller, and uh, the new guy, Chris Wray. Uh, something's very, very wrong with the FBI. Um, they're taking their cues, I guess, from the Biden administration, just like Benghazi. They didn't want to call it terrorism. So back to the presser, it was, um, it was bad. There's no way to get away from that. Although some people are, believe it or not, even though he gave Ukraine uh, no backing whatsoever, the green light to invade to Russia, yeah, that really happened. The lying, the overt lying though. Here he is last week, remember, this speech is part of the public record. He thinks our memory doesn't go back this far. Sorry, Joe, it does. The consequential moments in history they present a choice. Do you want to be the side, the side of Dr. King or George Wallace? Do you want to be on the side of John Lewis or Bull Connor? Wow, that's uh, Bull Connor, John, the, the, the Wallace, the segregationist governor. And that's Bull Connor, by the way, the director of public safety in Alabama, an ardent segregationist. I heard him make the comparison, right? You're with Bull Connor if you don't vote for that John Lewis voting rights package. Oh, he didn't say anything like that. Listen very carefully. Right, Joe? You campaigned and, and you ran on a return to civility. And I know that 
you dispute the characterization that you called folks who would oppose those voting bills um, as being Bull Connor or, or George Wallace, but you said that they would be sort of in the, the same camp. No, uh, I didn't say that. Look what I said. Go back and read what I said and tell me if you think I called anyone who voted on the side of the position taken by Bull Connor that they were Bull Connor. And that is an interesting reading of English. You, you, I assume you got into, into journalism because you like to write. What a nasty guy and what a liar. Oh, wait, literally, let's see. I didn't call them Bull Connor. I didn't call them Bull Connor. I said they were just like Bull Connor. That puts a whole new paint job on it, doesn't it? Do you want to be on the side of John Lewis or Bull Connor? <laughs> Uh, we shouldn't be surprised. Joe Biden has been a liar since we first got to know him. I first got to know him as a public figure when I was a senior in high school. Uh, this was a huge story at the time. He ran for president and got caught lying about everything, literally everything. Everything you're about to hear him say is not true. What law school did you attend, and where did you place in that class? And the other question oh, is, yes. could you quickly, I, I think we I, I think I probably have a much higher IQ than you do, I suspect. <laughs> I went to law school on a full academic scholarship, the only one in my, in my class uh, to have a full academic scholarship. In the first year in law school, I decided I didn't want to be in law school and ended up in the bottom two-thirds of my class and then decided I wanted to stay, went back to law school, and in fact ended up in the top half of my class. I won the international moot court competition. I was the outstanding student in the political science department at the end of my year. I graduated with three degrees from undergraduate school and 165 credits, only needed 123 credits, and I'd be delighted to sit down and compare my IQ to yours if you'd like, Frank. Wow, huh? That's a, that's a proud man. Of all those things he did, he didn't do any of them. Maya Angelou, the great poet, right? When somebody tells you who they are the first time, believe them. Back then, the fake news wasn't so fake, and uh, they outed Joe Biden as a liar. Biden now concedes he did not graduate in the top half of his law school class, that he does not have three degrees from college, and that he was not named outstanding political science student in college. Newsweek says Biden actually went to school on a half scholarship, ended up near the bottom of his class, and won only one degree, not three. Joe Biden ranked 76th in a class of 85 at the University of Syracuse Law School. I mean, this guy comes off this whole thing as a flyweight. Now Biden says Newsweek is right. His memory had failed him. Then he thought he could smile his way out of all this. No, he couldn't. He had to quit the race back in 1987. He actually wanted to be president in his mid-40s because he got caught in all these lies. But he was fighting for his survival. He thought he could pull it off. Again, the media back then, they were fantastic. They did not hold back. That reporter yesterday, he was so mm, polite and tiptoeing around. Listen to this. Do you feel you're able to control, to put in the vernacular of your mouth, that you can think before you talk? Well, I've been in this business for 15 years. Um, and uh, I, uh, um, I let my record of 15 years versus the transgression that you're referring to uh, stand. And you, can make, you all can make that judgment. I feel very capable of uh, using my mouth in sync with my mind. Uh, unfortunately, that is not the case. It wasn't the case back then. And more consequentially, it's not the case right now. What he said about Russia and Ukraine, he just, he's not smart enough to be doing this on this level as president of the United States. This was damaging to our national security. When he said this. I'm not so sure he has, uh, is certain what he's gonna do. My guess is he will move in. He has to do something. Yikes, how about, <laughs> that sounds like a green light, right? He has no choice but to invade at this point. Um, we know he's compromised, by the way, over whether it's Russia, Ukraine. He's got all kinds of entanglements that the fake news refuse to pursue. And now we have this. Why would he be saying what he's saying? Maybe he just can't control himself. Maybe there's a more sinister motive. And by the way, he just couldn't be in charge, you know? the president of the United States, the chief executive of the entire government, you would think that there's a bit of, you know, decisiveness there, you, you. No, <laughs> no. 
how, how many more hours am I doing this? I'm happy to stick around. Thank you, sir. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on, guys. <laughs> We've only gone an hour and 20 minutes. I'll keep going. How long are you guys ready to go? You want to go for another hour or two? He's laughing at us. Uh, so his performance yesterday undoubtedly really <laughs> frightened, infuriated. His minders, his staff, the people I now think he works for, like Susan Rice, you don't see her very much. She is very close to Obama. She is the top advisor, advisor to uh, Joe Biden. After the last election, liberty-minded Americans are facing a difficult question. What do we do now? We do have a plan to stop them. This is the only plan that bypasses Biden and Congress to save the republic. Sign the petition at conventionofstates.com.